I want to say good morning and welcome to those who are joining us uh, online for our services here at the Freetown Road Church of Christ in Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, as always, if you live in the area, are moving to the Metroplex, or just passing through, please reach out to us so that we can connect with you, get to know you, tell you more about us, about the Lord, and, and how we might be able to to help you in your spiritual walk. Uh, right now, we have our in-person services uh, suspended. This will be the, the second week, uh, but uh, we're going to meet later to determine the, the steps going forward. And uh, we will let you know about that so that you know uh, if we're having services here at the building or if they'll just be available to you, to you online. But we are still certainly thankful that we live in an age where we have uh, the technology available to us to still deliver the, the Word of God to people. And before we get started, let's go ahead and uh, center our hearts and minds uh, through prayer toward our Father. O glorious and noble Father, you who sit above the heavens arrayed in the light of your own majesty. How wondrous it is to come into your presence at this hour and to proclaim our love for you who has made all things. Let us be clothed with a humility worthy of thee. Permit our hearts to be adorned with the jewels of your mercy and grace. And by your eternal virtue, may our minds be devoid of self and overflow with the goodness of your counsel. Father, remind us of that most noble of gifts, that from glory the Son came upon a world barren of hope to willingly offer that which we could not endeavor to do ourselves, an unblemished life, a holy soul, and a divine spirit. Oh, what marvelous joy it is to proclaim the boundless love of the Lord, that we who are called of thee may find comfort in the glory of the cross. Father, be with us now as we present ourselves to the truth of your word. Forgive us our weaknesses. Hold not our sins against us. And may you receive all the honor, both now and forever. Amen. Last week, we put on pause our series, uh, Life in the Spirit. We did that so that when we come back together, uh, joined in this house of worship, we could pick up where we left off. And so spent last week and are spending this week uh, looking at a couple, of, a couple of different things. And I would like to begin this morning's message by reading a few selections from the Revelation of Jesus Christ, Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 through 5, Revelation 21, verses 22 through 27, and finally Revelation 21 and verse 4. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. The message this morning is one that has been preached since the Old Testament, since the beginning, really. And that is the idea of going home, going home to where we were meant to be. I was up here working the other day, and it was later in the afternoon. And when it was time for me to go, I sat outside in the truck just thinking about the time of day, the traffic, and what have you, and, and which way I wanted to go. I figured that there were two ways that I could take. The first would be to get on Robinson Road, which is just outside the building, go down to the, the next street, 303, get on the PGB toll, uh, that curves over to I-20, and then that curves to 360. So I could go that route. Uh, the other route that I could take is Robinson Road here to 303, and then get on 161, which is the frontage road, and take that all the way down to, to Lynn Creek. Now, if you're not from this area, you wouldn't be familiar, but Lynn Creek is, is pretty far down there in South Grand Prairie. I realize that, uh, you know, from Lynn Creek, I'd cross over 360 and make another turn, but that's, that seems simple enough, right? Well, not really, because there are benefits and drawbacks to each one, and, and we'll get to those in, in a bit, but consider that at the end of the day, we all want to go home. Maybe you've been out running errands, or maybe you've been at work, or the movies, or a friend's house, or whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, we all want to go home. No one wants to sit in the Walmart parking lot the rest of their life. Even though, ladies, it may seem that way to your husbands. And your friend is going to start worrying about you if they see you in their driveway at 3 a.m. when you walked out the front door at 8 o'clock. At the end of the day, we all want to go home. Now, why would I want to go home to begin with? Well, first, and this is probably the best reason, I wasn't meant to live here. Yeah, I come up to this, this house of worship, to my office and, and work, but I wasn't meant to live here. You see, I'm only meant to be here for a certain amount of time. For some people, when they go to work, they have longer hours, and for others, their hours are, are shorter. But in either case, there is a point when we leave our work to go home. I don't care how dedicated you are to your job, there will come a point when you go home. And everybody has a motivation for going home. Uh, for some, it may be that there's family waiting for them. Uh, that they have loved ones who are there waiting for them to come for, for evening meal or, or just simply to kiss them goodnight. So maybe for some, it's, it's family that's waiting. For others, it might not be family, but just that they're tired. It's been a long day, one that seems to, to never end. Well, let me tell you, it's the same way with trying to get to heaven. Some have family that they want to join. And others are just tired and, and they can't wait for it to be over. They can't wait to get to that place to where there's no sorrow, no pain, no suffering, no death. You know, the apostles wrote about this in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. People are referred to as pilgrims, sojourners, or exiles. Uh, in Hebrews 11 and verse 9, Abraham is referred to as an alien in the land of promise. And in 1 Chronicles 9 and, or 29 and verse 15, it says, We are strangers before you and sojourners, as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow. And there is no abiding. There is no abiding there. Uh, you know, we can't stay at our job. We can't stay at work. This idea that we are just passing through. We sing the hymn, This world is not my home. 
I'm just a passing through. My treasure's laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Our desire is to go home. Now, why can't I just stay at work? Well, let's think about that for a moment. Why can't I just stay at work? Sure, there's some benefits. There's, there's fresh water, right? Fresh cold water out of the fountain. There's a bathroom. There's air conditioning. There's plenty of room. There are even some snacks over in the annex. It sounds so pretty, pretty good so far, but, but let's keep thinking. What doesn't it have? Well, if, I, if my family is at home, it doesn't have them. Uh, let's think about something maybe a little bit more practical. It doesn't have a shower. See, that air conditioner, it's only going to keep me from getting going ripe for so long. And the food's going to run out. When it comes down to it, there are several things I need that my work just doesn't give me. And not a single person who has a job is meant to do that work forever. At some point, we're going to punch the time clock and head out. Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed for men to die once and after that comes judgment. There is a point to where we all have to go home. But even though they go home, not everyone goes to the same house. Now, I'm not talking about multiple heavens or a plurality of hells. I'm saying one goes to one house and one goes to another. But the type of home that you go to depends on the work. See, remember, we were not meant to stay at our jobs. We're meant to go on. James would write, what is your life but a vapor? Here one moment and gone the next. The Old Testament writer, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher at the beginning of Ecclesiastes. All is vanity. All is pointless. All, is, all, all things in this world, they really don't matter because there will come a day when it will crumble, fall and fade into ruin time so when it comes to the work and this idea of going home again it depends on the type of work that you're going to do see some are only focused on the work of this world they want it now they're impatient as soon as the money is earned it's spent now john 8 44 says these kind of people are of the devil and they love to do the devil's work Now, make no mistake, I'm not talking that it's wrong to earn money. We all have to earn money. We all have to pay bills and and what have you. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there are individuals who are friends of this world, which the New Testament tells us is enmity with God. There are people who, who are so focused on the materialistic things of this world that they have forgotten the command of Colossians 3, verses 1 through 3, where we are to set our minds on heavenly things where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. They work and spin, they work and spin, they work and spin. They think, give no thought to the future. Others work to invest. They work, they earn But they're not interested necessarily in the moment. They're investing in their future. Muhammad Ali said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. We need to be willing to do what is hard now so that we can enjoy what's beautiful later. We have to make that choice. We've all got to go home, but what work are we going to do while we're here? Again, we need to be willing to do what is hard now so that we can enjoy what's beautiful later. Now, what might that entail, that difficulty? For some, it may be losing family. It may be losing friends. It may not be going to the same places. You know, one of the best illustrations that I heard of becoming a Christian is very much like an alcoholic who's trying to get clean. Is that if they want to stay sober, they can't necessarily hang around the same crowd. They can't always go to the same places that they used to or participate in the same activities that they wanted. We have people today who they go off and they fellowship with denominational bodies and say, well, they do a lot of good work. 
You know, maybe at this time in our society they're uh, doing COVID testing or they are uh, giving out food baskets or something like that. The Lord's people can do that too without referring others to a denominational body. Let me, let me present something to you in the consideration of how difficult this work might be. You realize that society has a problem. That there are many people who can't pay their bills, can't afford groceries. And you know that this congregation over here who does not worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth as we're commanded in the Gospels. You know that they don't do that, but you still refer someone there anyways. And then they go over there. They get this food. The people share with them a little bit about the Bible and what they believe. About what they believe. And, and so they're so happy that they stay there. They've completely forgotten the original person who helped them. The one who directed them to begin with. But what have we done? but sent them from the Lord's church to a place of error. All because we believe that they're doing a good work. The Lord's people have to pick up the slack. We have to keep doing what is commanded of us. We have to be willing to do what's hard to enjoy what's beautiful later. Now, occasionally when I'm up here at the building, my, sometimes... My family is at work with me. I can't, now, when I'm going home, I just can't leave them here, can I? We've already said that there's no showers and not enough food, so what am I going to do? Well, I need to take them home as well. What type of husband and father would I be if, if I brought them to a place of work just to abandon them there while I go home? God says to take them with you. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. Titus 2 and verse 4, speaking to the women in reference to the younger women. Train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, submissive to their own husbands, etc. For children, both male and female. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 7. Teach your children in reference there to the law of Moses. But uh, for us, it would be the entirety of Scripture. Teach your children. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Write it on your doorposts. Exemplify the Word of God in your life. Don't just leave your family at your work. Endeavor to take them home with you. Sometimes my friends may visit me at work. I might be up here by myself and someone drop by and I may, after a, a long day, a day that feels like a lifetime, I probably want to invite them over to the house for dinner or something. And maybe they're not sure how to get there and they're going to need some directions. And so now we're back to where we started. Do I take Robinson to 303 to PGBT to I-20 to, to 360? Or Robinson to 303 to 161 to Lynn Creek? Now taking 360 has some benefit. Taking that quicker route has some benefit. Mainly it's faster. Even if there's traffic, it's faster. The downside, though, is that it doesn't stop at my doorstep. I mean, it'll pass right by my neighborhood, but it won't get me home. I have to, if I want to get home, I have to get off that faster, easier, broad way and get onto the narrower streets. Another downside is that because it's tolls, it'll end up costing me later. I may, I, I may uh, one day, I may just be going along, going home, trying to go home. We already established I can't get there because it's not stopping right at my doorstep. Everything, it seems like a free ride until I get the bill later. And sometimes that bill comes at the most inopportune of times. So yeah, I can get near my house but not to my house faster and pay someone else for the privilege. 
Now, taking Lynn Creek, that's another story. First, it's slower. There's stops along the way. There's moments to where, you know, you show up at a stop sign or a stoplight and you have to, you have to pause. Now, that pausing gives me a, a, an opportunity to actually reflect, maybe on what I have to do later that evening or, or what's waiting for me at home. But there's moments to pause, a few more turns, but ultimately I'll end up at my front door. But the best benefit of it, because it isn't a toll, I don't have to pay. Someone else paid for that road to be there. I'm not going to get a bill later because of that road and for being on it. Christ put it this way in Matthew 7, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. There's a lot of people who are going to take that, that toll. And they're going to pay the price for it later. And there are others who are going to take their time. It might be a little bit slower. It might take them a little longer to get there. But they won't have to pay for it. Right now, you're at work. But you were never meant to stay here. Remember pilgrims, exiles, sojourners. You have work to do while you're here. But at the end of the day, we all want to go home. And there are different routes that we can take. Robert Frost wrote, Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. What road are you on this morning? Are you just trying to take the easy way? Knowing full well that that highway is, isn't going to stop right at your front door. There are some people, though, who have had the benefit of living and working on those narrow streets their entire lives. Never had to get on the, the toll. There are others who are on that toll, but... They've got to get off, too, if they're going to make it home. Which road are you on this morning? I would encourage you to consider your own trip from your work. What's waiting for me there? Is it family? Is it a brilliant home where there's a mansion with many rooms? Is it this place where there is no sorrow, no more death? Or is it a place of wickedness and despair? If there is any need that you have, I would encourage you to reach out to the congregation here that we might assist you in your walk with Christ. We might pray for you, pray with you, Set up a Bible study. doesn't matter where you are. We can accomplish that. If there's anything that we can do, please let us know here at the Freetown Road Church of Christ. We thank you for your time this morning.